This is the nation station, WLW in Cincinnati, your clear channel service. Now, Bob, again, about the uh, area or the building from which the shot apparently was fired, could yeah. you describe that for us and tell us about how far away it was from the car and how they would have been able to see the car from that distance? Yes, well, I'll describe the, uh, the scene. There was, as you come out of the main street of downtown Dallas, which was packed with people, it feeds into a parkway called the Tipple Underpass. And that parkway, which is lined with trees and lawns, takes a bend. And behind some trees and a set of service road is a brick building of about eight stories, which is called the Texas School Book Depository. I now, see. So there were two witnesses, two of them who I talked to and the police talked to, say they saw a man with a gun uh, in the, one said the second floor, another one said the fourth floor, a window of that building. Now, from either floor, Frank, he would be able to see over the low trees to about a hundred yards away where the president's car was. An unobstructed view, Bob? I would think so. I did not, I was not able to go up to either of those windows, uh, so I couldn't see for myself, but looking at it from the ground, it looked as though it would be. Um, the president, therefore, must have had, uh, presented either a profile to the assailant, if he was, in fact, in those windows where the witnesses say, and, or, his three-quarter back, because his car had actually passed the direct line from the window. Uh, you see, the, the way it went is the car would have approached the window head on, then turned left and gone down a slight uh, decline under the, um, under the underpass. Just a moment, Frank. Yes, Bob. Uh, that seems to fit, Bill, with what he said. The word that we had here was the president was struck in the right the temple. Yes, Bob. The body has been carried out. Go ahead and say again, Bob. The president's body has just been carried out of the hospital in the bronze casket, and it was accompanied by his military aide, Major General Clifton. And, uh, and it has been placed in an ambulance. I understand it is being taken straight to the uh, air base where he landed for to be flown back to Washington. I see, Bob. The crowds have all been moved away from the door by the local police and the Secret Service. I can hear the motorcycle escort outside with the ambulance starting up. And the president's body with the police motorcycle escort is now pulling away from the hospital. It is about one and a half hours since he was shot. The president has been dead for about an hour and seven minutes. Vice President Johnson, Lyndon Johnson, who is now constitutionally the president, left immediately after the president's death was confirmed and with a peace escort went off to the airport, presumably to go straight to Washington to assume the constitutional responsibilities of the president. Bob, returning to your earlier narrative, you had just taken us to the point where the president's car had turned, and I was about to ask... Now there were three cars behind him with Secret Service and several Texas congressmen, and then I was in the first press bus, the front of the first press bus, which came behind those. And just as we turned the corner, about uh, 40 feet behind the president's car, um, I heard three shots. Now, Bob, was the president seated or standing at that time? The president was seated because there were very few people at that point. It was a thin crowd at that exact point. Most of the crowd had been concentrated a few hundred yards back. The president was seated, Mrs. Kennedy was seated, but when I heard the shots, I saw people fall to the ground and was not looking for the moment at the president. The car immediately disappeared under the underpass and speeded up to go straight to the hospital. And I left the press box and went to this building from which shots reportedly came. Mm -hmm. what, so, sort, what sort of a building is it, Bob? Well, it is a, uh, I told you the title, it's the Texas uh, School Book Depository. It's a... Uh, uh, orangey brick building of about eight floors, and um, it was showing an expanse to the street of maybe uh, about eight windows wide in the front. Well, Bob, from the point where they think the man with the gun might have been seen yeah. to where the president was actually felled, would it have been possible for him to have been struck by a bullet in the right temple? That's as well. Um, I believe that if he was using a high-powered rifle with a telescopic sight, uh, one policeman told me he understood it was a high-powered rifle. I don't know about the telescopic sight. I assume that 
from that distance, it could be. I see. It about, could be. About how fast was the president's motorcade going at the uh, time of the fire? Slowly. It was about, by that time, having just gone around the corner, it was probably between 15 and 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And Vice President Lyndon Johnson was how far behind? Uh, I'm not sure, Frank, I which see. car. There was a jumble of congressmen in the car immediately behind, and I'm not sure which car Vice President Johnson was in. And then you say, of course, that the motorcade speeded up immediately and rushed and, toward and the And disappeared hospital. under the underpass, and I had jumped out by that time and was running with the police. They thought the assailant had fled over some railroad tracks, and they chased him through uh, what they thought was the assailant through several trains. Mm -hmm. uh, standing on the track. And now we have urgent bulletins from Dallas again. We reported to you not too long ago that to report that a policeman had been shot in connection with the president's assassination, but we had no further at the moment. Now we have detail to a certain extent. A Secret Service agent and a Dallas policeman were shot and killed today some distance from the area where President Kennedy was assassinated. We have no more information on that, but from the Secret Service, Lieutenant Eric Kaminsky reports... The assassin weapon appears to have been a high-powered army or Japanese rifle of about 25 caliber. The rifle had a scope on it, the same kind of rifle, apparently, that Medgar Evers, the Negro leader, was shot with in Mississippi. The entire building, as we've noticed before, or told you before, this was a warehouse near the underpass where the president was traveling. But the entire building, this warehouse where the sniper was located, was evacuated sometime before the president passed by. People were working in the building, however, at the time of the shooting. Dallas inspector, police inspector J.H. Sawyer says, police found the remains of fried chicken and paper on the fifth floor of that building. Apparently, the person who had been there uh, had been there quite a while. And after the fatal shots were fired, the stricken president's secret service, of course, the driver, raced away immediately to, to the hospital. And uh, we have uh, uh, further reports at this time from Dallas to piece out this story as fast as we possibly can. One of the prime reporters on station WFAA, the NBC affiliate in Dallas, is standing by. Pierce Alman, WFAA Dallas, will you please come in? About 12.15 today, I and a couple of other people from the station decided to walk about four blocks north from our studios to greet the President of the United States as he came through Dallas on a motorcade. <laughs> he had left Dallas Love Field. He had a warm reception there. He had caused some consternation to the Secret Service agents around him by leaving the yellow marked guide lanes as he got off his jet and began greeting people who were standing alongside the wire fence at Dallas Love Field. Without incident, he got into his convertible, open top, and flanked by Secret Service men, began his ride through downtown Dallas. The reception was warm, it was enthusiastic, and as he came down Main Street on the way to the Stemmons Avenue trademark, where he was to deliver an address sponsored by the Dallas Citizens Council, he turned the corner just before going under a triple underpass. I was standing at the corner of Elm Streets and Houston Streets here in Dallas, Texas, and as he turned, I couldn't help think to myself how vigorous, how healthy he looked. He was tanned. He seemed to be feeling good. He was waving to the crowd. I began applauding like the rest and the man to my right and the woman to my left. She commented on Jackie's lovely dress. And suddenly we heard a reverberating explosion. My first thought was not to look at the president. I guess the, I guess the, the thought that anybody would take a shot at the president of the United States didn't even go through my mind at the time. I rather looked around as if to say, well, someone has fireworks and it's in pretty poor taste at this moment. The president ducked, at least that's what it looked like to me. I thought this was a natural reaction. I didn't realize at the time that he had been shot and was slumping. There were three shots fired. They were spaced. They didn't seem to come from any automatic weapon of any kind. Rather careful and deliberate aim. A Secret Service man was killed. No one seemed galvanized into instant action. Everyone was rather stunned. And suddenly, the Lincoln convertible sped away at top speed, and guns appeared on everyone around. The police came around, flinging us to the ground, saying, hit the dirt. And they began not returning fire because of the crowd, but rather looking for someone at which to shoot. I ran, along with a few other people, over to the top of a knoll, which was just north of the site. It was about 20 feet. Everyone seemed to be running in that direction. 
very foolish people now that we look back on it. We couldn't see anything, though. There's a large building, about seven or eight stories, on the corner of Elm and Houston Streets. It's a Texas school book depository. It prides itself on being the largest in the state. It has several floors that are not used too often that stack dusty books. And we wondered to ourselves at the time how it was possible to cover all the open windows in this building as well as all the open space around, how the Secret Service, how the FBI men, how the county sheriff's officers and how the Dallas police officers could do this. Well, evidently they could not successfully. We went into the Texas School Book Depository building and immediately it was cordoned off.